Yeah, we're here today to, we've been invited by Bad Camera, the amazing Bad Camera, to do a calendar um, on behalf of Delphi Medical. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Alison Parry. I'm a member of um, Fallen Angels Dance Theatre. My name's Damien. Uh, I play Monkey, or the monkey on your back, uh, in Fallen Angels Dance Theatre. Can, so, can I introduce myself? Yeah. My name's Jane Dewar. Is that what you want me to say? Yeah. My name's Grace Buckle, and I'm addicted to weed. My name is Sandeep. For 25 years, I was junkie. Hi, I'm Zoe, I'm from East Lancashire. Yes, my name's Geoffrey Jordan. I'm Tony, from Moss Side, born and bred. My name's Robert Mackay, and in 80 days I've been clean again, no things have changed for me. Hi, I'm Sarah, and I am five months sober. My name's Paul Bays, and I'm Artistic Director of Fallen Angels Dance Theatre. My name's Simon Miller, I'm uh, 42 years old. Uh, today I'm currently 19 months, 2 weeks and 1 day clean. I'm Sherry and I'm 8 months clean tomorrow. Yeah, 10 months next week. That, that's 10 months is the longest ever. Well, this sort of, this idea for this shoot I've had in my mind for a while and I thought it would be um, a good thing to experiment with. Why did you come here today? Yeah. Well, it's really about me <laughs> giving back. <laughs> trying to give something back to the community actually basically. Well. The fact that the calendars, because of ex-users making something, you know, with the lives, I thought it was like, I've got to say, killing two birds, killing one bird with two stones. I hope that somebody that sees me and knows me, that's struggling, can say, well, I know him. Maybe it might plant a seed in them and they mean to cover themselves. Once I got a grasp of what I needed to do, it's been very easy. I was finished, you know, so there was nothing else for me, there was nowhere else for me to go. I came straight from prison and I've been here ever since. Came to treatment only oh, nearly a year ago. And um, basically, in that year, basically changed my life around. I achieved abstinence in RAMP. Never heard of abstinence before I'd done RAMP. What Aquan gave me, more than anything, was confidence in myself, belief in myself, and um, just a bit of self-esteem to enable me to do volunteer work and education courses. And I became a volunteer, co-facilitating ramp, and then was fortunate enough to get offered a job as a housing coordinator, which I've now been doing for just over two and a half years, and I love it. My addiction took me to places um, where I never thought I'd go, to be honest. Um, I ended up, all my veins collapsed in my arm, um, so it was pretty heavy. Um, I never thought I'd inject and kind of the goalpost moved. Um, so I was desperate and I, I was dying. I, I just like helping people. I've been selfish for so long, stuck in addiction, that uh, it became apparent to me very early on in the recovery that Helping people helps me, so that's what I do. I'm now at the age of 30. I'm celebrating my 30 days being clean today. Um, I suffer from mental health problems and I got paranoid, so it was escalating my paranoid schizophrenia, so I thought I'd better get help. I sought help and seeked out help through ADS and Lifeline. I am five months sober. And anything about your treatment journey? Um, well, I went into treatment on the 18th of June and I've just finished last week. Um, treatment's been tough, but the best thing I've done. I've used all types of services over the years. I've been, I was in addiction 24 years, and but this time when I went to prison, I did what was, uh, I did a ramp course. It taught me to look at like the ripple effect and actually the other people who who my crimes through my addiction impact on. Gracie Manchester Police Headquarters in Manchester, uh, they asked me would I come in and do something regarding restorative justice, which entails me meeting my victim of my crime face to face and uh, giving her some answers and giving her closure. She was at the event today, lovely to see her. 
It's really something that I'd never thought when I was using that I would ever do. Mm. And it just sort of proves that you could do anything that you want and people don't really think they're so limited in what they do. Oh, it's been a long time. I keep thinking I'm, I'm coming to a balance because I was using for 16 years. So it's like another year I'm, I'm a balance knowing that I've done the same time clean as I was using. What, 13 months and 10 days in recovery and life's completely changed. Like, I volunteer for the, a blind society at the Manchester Eye Hospital and I volunteer working with disabled youngsters and it's mad how life changes and things become better. Like, most days I wake up with a smile on my face. I isolated. Um, I was very lonely, very desperate. Didn't know where to turn to. Well, I'm 90 days clean a day, but four months ago, um, I was back in Scotland, living in a flat on my own, full of fear and paranoia, um, eight stone. Dean um, Enton to get my drugs. I've been in recovery about eight years now. Um, recovery's brought me a new way of life. It's an amazing life. I've got two kids, my family. My two kids have never seen me use. Um, and we created this company called Fallen Angels Dance Theatre to kind of, because I've always, I've danced professionally for years. Um, I was a soloist with Birmingham Royal Ballet. And I thought I'm really passionate about recovery and helping people and also passionate about dance as well so we kind of merged the two together and it's gone from strength to strength and we get invited to all different places like we've been invited to Parliament, we were invited to Parliament last week to perform in front of 60 world parliamentarians to do as part of their um, drug policies and procedures so that was pretty amazing and um, yeah. It's just, uh, it just keeps going from strength to strength. Recovery rocks. I first started smoking weed when I was aged 15 or 16. I'm now at the age of 30. I'm celebrating my 30 days being clean today. The deciding factor for me to come into recovery is because I didn't want to die um, in active addiction. Now I was given four months to leave. My doctor says I won't even give you six months. You know, and um, to be it, that was six years ago. So, yeah, it's cool, man. <laughs> the reasons for coming here today is if by me saying how it was for me and how I've recovered helps somebody else, then that'd be great. No U turns, as I thought I said, <laughs> no U turns. Um, yeah, that's it. I just hope. Uh, I just hope it's my time, you know. It's the freedom, isn't it, though, that it comes with, you know, you're not a prisoner in your own head anymore, you don't, you have that choice today, don't you? We have the choice whether we drink or we don't. I've been addicted to heroin and crack for years. Um, I've tried to get into treatment and into recovery um, after overdosing, losing my children, losing my home, losing my job. And losing the trust of my family and eventually I managed to get into detox through my drug worker. I had a bad addiction um, for 10, 10, 12 years. Um, used to hit up um, speed, um, was on the streets for a while um, but now life is fantastic. Dance, yoga, um, yeah, recovery is great. I'm taking a lot of photographs with bad camera, um, smile, <laughs> uh, happy about that. It's something that I've really enjoyed doing for years, but while I was in addiction, I didn't do it. Um, I lost all my motivation, uh, my equipment, I'd even sold my camera. Uh, so I wasn't doing anything that I enjoyed. I was just using drugs on a daily basis, but now, I'm um, doing something that I enjoy virtually every day with some brilliant people around me and it's like I've struck gold.
I'm just grateful, I'm proper grateful for being able to have that bit of change and making life different. No matter how hard I tried to be right and be a good mum, I just, I couldn't do it. Because of my addiction and alcoholism, Caleb's been living with my parents. I admitted to my mum that I had a drink problem, um, but I couldn't admit that I was using drugs as well. My mum always fed him, always bought his nappies for him. I um, went to different services to try and stop my drug addiction. And when I fell pregnant, I did stop. I could stop, but I could never stay stopped. No matter how hard I tried, six months old, it resurfaced to the point that I wasn't caring for him. I'd start drinking again, and each time it got worse and worse and worse. Social services got involved, and he was taken away from me. I felt like a total failure, an absolute failure, and the fact that I couldn't even provide and look after my own son the way a mother should. It was hard, it was really, really hard. But I came to accept that when I'm sober and clean, I'm not the person I am in addiction. I have him all weekends now. And today, he loves staying at my house. I can be his mum and I can provide for him and put him first instead of myself. He still stays with my mum and dad in the week because he started nursery, started big boy school. And he's just a happy, such a happy little boy. <laughs> Thinking about back what I've done, it still hurts and stuff, but I accept that I can't change it. <laughs> but I can be his mum today. That's the main thing, is to stay clean for me and for my family, for my children. I've got two beautiful daughters. I've got a loving family. Um, I'm not hurting them anymore. Uh, my hope is that maybe one day they can be proud of me. Thank you. Don't put that in. Not a roll. to help produce something that was going to maybe have, even if it's the tiniest of impacts on people who see it, whether they're people who are already in the, still in addiction, um, if they can get a little bit of inspiration from looking at the calendar and going, ooh, what's going on there, sort of thing. Um, or maybe even professionals, people working in the field, if it helps to maybe educate or change some attitudes um, then that's brilliant if it helps anybody then fab <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,